The dream of every cassava farmer is to record high yield and make more money. But that dream cannot be actualized with poor weed management. This week on Cassava Matters, we shall start a discussion on weeds, types of weeds, how they affect cassava farms, and the different weed control measures recommended by RITA to guarantee clean and weed-free fields. Farmers have continued to identify weeds as one of the major challenges they face on their cassava farms. Alhaji Salami Mukaila, a farmer in Awe, Afijo local government area, and Sulaiman Shitu, a farmer in Lalate, Ibarakwa East local government area, both in Oyo State, speak to us about how they were struggling with weeds before being introduced to the six steps to cassava weed management and best planting practices. <laughs> On the major problem, Tamani Lori of Paki, Ri Emi Paki Mangu, Potori Pamagmi, Sophie Totuye, Aleni Lati Rokoriko, Kuro Lorie, Biori, and Mary, and Maru Nibami, Law of Bio Jobashi Possi, Bobo Okonconi, Baba Balafin, Adi Jokofe Gatege, So Opolo Kota Bafin, Omeo Baukolo, the one by your circle. As it only replace it, as at the time to your key, I replace it like a gabby. It is a co away, laying your second or semi of a German to your bahoo way. Come off your book, come off your book, come off your book, come off your book, so that you can come near Paja. It is important to have a weed control strategy before starting your cassava farm. A good weed management strategy begins with the ability to identify weeds. Professor Friday Ekeleme, a renowned weed scientist, is the principal investigator of the RITA Cassava Weed Management Project. He talks to us about the common weeds, how to identify them, and how to control them. If your aim is to cultivate cassava, and uh, you just want cassava, and you go into that field and you see sugar cane. Sugar cane, in that sense, is a weed because it's not your main focus of production, even though sugar cane is very useful. So that's why uh, simply people say, okay, weeds are plants, unwanted plants, plants that uh, you don't want in an environment where you are producing because they are not useful uh, to you at that moment. So you regard them as weeds. Weeds are not, even though we say they're unwanted, they are not totally bad. In fact, weeds are very useful. For example, some are medicinal. Um, in terms of um, aesthetics, for example, you see football field, those are grasses. People protect them and in fact spend money on them. In terms of erosion control, you can even use weeds. For example, cyanidum can be used in erosion control. Uh, there are weeds that people use in making uh, seaweeds, for example, grasses, making baskets. So um, it, is, it would not be right to say that weeds are totally bad, no. When they become harmful, um, at the point where they are competing with your plants for nutrients, for sunlight, for moisture, uh, at that point you consider them very, very harmful. For example, cassava is more or less a perennial crop, uh, grows for a very, at most six to 12 months, uh, you are harvesting. But when you look at cassava, cassava is a slow starter. It starts very slowly. Within uh, the first three months, it is highly prone to uh, weed infestation. So if you don't control your weeds within the first three months, and when it is tuberizing, then you are bound to lose uh, some, you know, 
you lose your yield, yeah, substantially. The moment your cassava is 10, uh, nine months old, you really don't need to do anything. You are going there to control weeds for the fact that um, you may have rodents coming to destroy the crop, or you don't want fire to come in there and clear a crop. You know, in this environment, people born recklessly. So that's why at a later stage of uh, the crop growth, uh, you can still, you still go and control with, but at that point, the weed competition is not critical. <laughs> there, is no, there is no crop that is immune to weed infestation. In fact, weeds themselves uh, are susceptible to weeds also. What I mean by that, uh, one type of weed will outcompete another type of weed when they grow together. It's like human, we are human beings, but you know, if we sit together and some, one of us is strong and fat, he will choke the other ones. So that's the way it is uh, with weeds. Weeds are survivors. On a bad soil, they survive. On a bad environment where the crop will not go, they will survive. What, what that means is that um, some weeds grow more in some environment. Let me give you a typical example. The plant we call Imperata cylindrica is um, here, I think, uh, or in the east, they call it Ata. There, there may be a, a local name for it here. It's more in the savanna. So as you go into the high rainfall area, like east, eastern part of the country, you don't get it. But here, as you move towards the Samaritan, like Shaki and all that, you get it. So in terms of ecology, uh, you don't get Imperata everywhere. The same thing with um, uh, Panicum Maximum, uh, you tend to have it more uh, where the rainfall is heavy. For example, if you go to the east, you get a lot of Panicum maximum. It doesn't mean you will not have it here, but the intensity is more in that environment than you have it here. The uh, six steps to and the, the best planting practice um, in cassava is uh, an outcome of uh, more than six years' work. And um, what we tell farmers is if you follow strictly what is recommended there, you move away from the low yield farmers currently get now. Uh, according to FAO report, the average national yield in Nigeria is 9.1. But with the six steps, you, if you follow it strictly, you go above 20 tons per hectare. You heard it from the professor. The six steps to cassava weed management is a master key to effective cassava weed management. Let's take a look at what the six steps are. Do you want to grow cassava and get higher yield? Here are six steps to help you achieve your dream. 1. Select a suitable site that is not on a slope, waterlogged, stony or very shallow. Two, if the vegetation is an older fallow with trees, shrubs and broad leaves and too tall to go over with a sprayer, slash the vegetation and plow. If the vegetation is a grass fallow with perennial weeds such as spare grass, guinea grass, siam weed, sensitive plant or giant potato and too tall to go over with a sprayer, slash the vegetation and wait for two weeks to allow the growth. 3. Apply glyphosate, for example, Roundup Turbo, Touchdown Forte, at labor rate to deal with the grass regrowing from the slashed grass fallow. Glyphosate should also be applied on a field if it has little vegetation, less than one meter tall, with perennial weeds. Thereafter, wait for 14 days to allow total kill by glyphosate. 4. 
tillage operations are costly but result in higher cassava yields and productive fields. Plowing generally increases ute yield by at least 5 tons per hectare. Only invest in plowing if the revenue expected from 5 tons of cassava exceeds the cost of plowing 1 hectare of land. Region increases root yield by at least 4 tons per hectare. Reach your field if the revenue from 4 tons of cassava exceeds the cost of ridging 1 hectare of land. Ridging is also recommended if your soil is high in clay content or if you intend to harvest in the dry season or if weeds are difficult to control. 5. Plant cassava only when the soil is moist at 1 meter between rows and 0.8 meters within rows. Thereafter, apply pre-emergence herbicide such as Prime Extra Gold at 4 liters per hectare or Lagoon at 1.25 liters per hectare within 24 hours after planting. Do not apply pre-emergence herbicide on dry soil. Replace cuttings that fail to sprout after 15 to 21 days. 6. When weeds cover 30% of your field and they are at 4 to 6 leaf stage, apply a post-emergence weed control, for example, post-emergence herbicides, mechanical or manual weeding. In grass-dominated fields or in portions of a field that are grass-dominated, apply Fossilate 40 or 3 liters per hectare under cassava canopy for grass and or broadleaf infested fields. Glufosinate ammonium, for example, Lifeline, Basta, Fascinate may be applied at label rate. Glyphosate like Roundup Turbo, Touchdown 40 and can also be carefully applied at label rate. But it is important to use a shield on the sprayer nozzle to avoid the glyphosate touching green parts of cassava which will result in cassava damage. If cassava is less than 8 weeks old and the field is infested with grass and broadleaf weeds, use manual weeding. Do not apply the same herbicides year in year out because this may promote the development of resistant weeds. Next time on Cassava Matters, we shall continue our discussion on weed control measures. To watch missed episodes and other useful cassava weed management videos, go to our YouTube channel, Cassava Matters, and our social media handles on Facebook and Twitter. For questions, comments, and inquiries, please use the following contact details on your screen. We'll be glad to hear from you.